Okay, so some of the bits that we've we've got here. Um, now it comes with this floor stand. Um, you see the pole from the antenna just slots into that. However, we're gonna be uh, mounting this on the side of the property. And so we've got this, uh, this wall mount bracket, which a couple of meaty fixings in that, and that's gonna go on the side of the property. Um, the next thing we've got is this unit, which provides power for the, for the dish, the antenna, and this also boots out Wi-Fi if you're using this as a standalone system. Oh, we've already got, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, a big home network going on, so we need this. Um, so this is the cable that comes uh, with the, you know, the basic setup, and that connects to this. You could see it's a sort of a USB type connection, but it's just a bit bigger than so it's. You know, you can't get that, that sort of connection off the shelf. That looks to be about 20 meters. Um, that's gonna be plenty for us. The guys actually ordered, just in case, 150 foot cable. We're not gonna need that. But yeah, this doesn't just, it's not just uh, an ethernet cable. It's not power over ethernet. It's its own dedicated cable. We then need a separate adapter to convert that to ethernet um, so first thing you need to do with this is download the app um, you can order the gear from the app um, and the first step that the app takes you through is quite a clever little thing where it's you know you wave your phone around it scans the area that you intend to mount the antenna to check for obstructions. Now, because we're mounting this on the side of the building, we've got a clear view of the sky, no obstruction from trees. So uh, let's get all this kit mounted, get it fired up. We'll try it as a standalone system first. We'll just use the Wi-Fi of this, we'll check some speeds, and then we'll see if we can get it working with our super duper home network. Okay, so you can see we've got our hole on the side of the property. There's our LTE antenna which needs to be you know really high up so that it's got a good line of sight of the tower over there so this is the app uh, that i used to find out which uh, operator had the, the the sort of the best coverage and the mass nearest to the customer's house for the lte antenna um so if we just click on coverage maps you can then choose uh you your operator so for example my phone's on EE so let's just click on that and this is actually showing uh, it's Marple for some reason I'm just going to zoom out let's go to uh, where I am in Saddleworth so yeah it's it's pretty good around here um, there are there are uh, are sort of dead spots but by and large EE would be a good choice for here so that's that's uh, sort of how I judged you know the, the the best coverage I went through each each operator so let's have a look at uh, O2 seems to like Marple for some reason let's go to me again So arguably O2's got better coverage, but uh, I'm locked in on a two year deal, so I'll be sticking with EE for a while. But it's, yeah, it's pretty handy that. Um, it also, you know, whilst you've got the app running in the background, it can do a real time survey for you, so you can see all the roads that I've driven on. Um, it gives you a a rough estimate of what the signal quality is like. So that's, you know, principally what I've used this this app for. There's other bits and pieces in there, but the, the, the coverage map is a really useful indicator for when we're installing LTE antennas. However, the Skylink 
just points straight up to the, uh, sorry, the Starlink rather, just points straight up to the sky. So I'm gonna mount it on the end of that wooden beam and that's gonna give that, uh, you know, the, the, the dish plenty of room to move around as it does automatically to get the best signal. Okay, so just take the end up of this cable just so we don't get any crud in the connections. So we'll just pull enough of that out. It's a really long cable, we'll just get it up there. The wall bracket comes with some cable clips actually. So we can get that underneath here as we have done with the Ethernet cable, the Cat 6, all the way up to the top of the uh, top of the roof line there. I'm just gonna pull enough of this out to get up to up to the end of here. We'll get the dish mounted, we'll get it turned on, we'll see what happens. So we've got the bracket on the end here, it gets supplied supplied with two of these agricultural sized bolts. So you see here mounting it on the end of this timber means that there's going to be no uh, impedance when the dish moves around to get its best signal. There we go, so that just clicks nicely. There's a little button here that you could press to pull the dish back up again. Just one little, one little tip. Uh, this bracket looks as though on the face of it, you could feed the cable up through through here when in fact you can't. There's not enough room to get the quite bulky connector through here. So it, you can see here, it does just sit perfectly. There's a little, little hole there where the cable sits and I'm just gonna ultimately clip this cable, keep it really discreet and along uh, underneath the soffit so that we can't see it. But just for now, while we get it set up, just going to leave that uh, leave that dangling just in case we need to move it at all and you can see i think it's pretty much at one extreme and then it will pivot through to the other extreme so having it mounted here should mean that there's no obstruction either from the roof uh obviously there's no trees or anything around to obstruct uh it's it's view of the satellites so let's plug it in and see what happens so we've got, uh, you see, a big pile of receiver cable there. Tidy that up shortly. Uh, so this is plugged into the bottom of this unit. Just gonna power this on. Let's go and see what happens thereafter. And there you go, we can see that it's tilting to try and find the satellite. Oh, how exciting. I will power it on. I'm just going through the setup process that uh, the app provides you with. Let's see what's next on the agenda. We've gone through the setup process, we've powered everything on. Now we need to join the network that this unit provides. Let's just have a go at that. Okay, so if I open the Wi-Fi settings, Now uh, you can see here it's called Woodroid Starlink, but um, initially that comes up as a as an open network called Stinky, funnily enough, um, without a lock there. You can click directly on that. It then takes you to a page where you can set up the Wi-Fi network. So if I just click on this, and I'm just going to type in the password. So it just asks you to. Uh, log on with your new credentials. Let's go back to the app now. So we've joined the Wi-Fi. It's booting up. I'm really keen to see what sort of speeds we'll get in here because, as I said, the broadband will be two to two to five meg, something like that. The LTE antenna would be getting, we have been getting between sort of, uh, yeah, it was maybe 20 to 40 with the Vodafone. Then that nose dive, so we've changed it for an O2. We get somewhere between 15 and 40 with O2. Um, it would be really, it's going to be really interesting to see what we get with uh, this Starlink. Okay, so we've just gone through the process. We've got to where it says finished, it's been set up. 
let's just jump back to this network screen but you see in the top corner there now we've got some internet so let's just do a quick speed test on the phone now I should point out obviously it's overcast today um, this is better on clearer days when you've got better weather also it depends on the position of the satellites now, this is why we're just leaving the O2 in place um, you know as a, as, a, uh, as a backup source just in case the satellites go down but yeah they're you know it's really good speeds happy with that now we're not going to be using the built-in Wi-Fi of the Starlink we're going to be connecting it to the home network but what is quite cool is this real-time map you can walk around your property and just see what the Wi-Fi coverage is like you see it gives you a little meter So once we've gone through the setup process, this is what the app looks like. Um, we could do a speed test. Let's just click on that. So roughly 60 upload, 20, uh, sorry, 60 download, 20, 25 upload. So that's you know it's really good compared with what we were getting with the LTE antenna um, you can see what devices are on the network so it's just me connected at the moment you can see um, uptime if there's been any power outages so uh, I actually just turned the power off previously so you can see there quarter past 12-ish that's the downtime there and then it just takes a little while to boot up again and then there's a few settings there like we can change the Wi-Fi login credentials this is quite cool you can preheat the device to melt any snow that might be on it um, if you are wanting to ship it away you can return it to its position that lets you get it back in the box and so on and so forth right next piece of the puzzle is let's try and get this working rather than just as a standalone unit it will be providing internet to our home network right so this is our ethernet adapter um, this end of the cable will plug into the Wi-Fi slash power unit. The receiver will plug in to this and then an Ethernet cable joins into our Unify Dream Machine. So let's make those connections and then uh, we can have a look at our Unify OS. See if we're getting internet. Right, so we've made all the necessary connections. Um, by default, uh, I wasn't immediately getting internet in the house. Um, what we need to do is go to settings, go to advanced, and then bypass Starlink Wi Fi router. Bypass mode will completely disable the built-in Starlink Wi-Fi router. This is an advanced feature that requires an Ethernet adapter, which we've got, and our own network, our own network equipment, which we have. So we can just click on save. Okay. Right. So we'll just give that a moment, and then we'll log on to our Unify Dream machine and just see if we've got an internet connection. So it just took a little while to uh, pull those settings through. You can see now we've logged on to our Dream Machine uh, Unify OS. We can see that internet is provided by Starlink. Let's just do a quick Google speed test. Uh, 
filling in. Gonna be really happy with that. So we're getting speeds, you know, the, the last speed test we did was about 50 meg download and 20, 25 upload. You see, we get much faster download speeds, uh, slower upload speeds, but you can see the weather here is really overcast. It's raining a little bit now, so we're, we're happy with those speeds. And there you go. So you can see it's discreetly cable tied. You're not going to see that cabling unless you really look for it under there.